What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell, and this is Nuggets of Truth. In our previous video, we explained that prayer is actually petitioning God. It's asking for your basic needs. It's petitioning God for the things that he has already promised to supply for you. Now the last use of the sword of the spirit is supplication. We get this from Paul's letter to the Ephesians explaining our spiritual armor. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 through 20. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Supplication is the Greek word on the screen, which means prayer, plea, beg, entreaty. Now, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word entreat means to plead with especially in order to persuade, ask urgently. This is a little bit different than prayer. Prayer, you're just making your requests known to God. They aren't always urgent, though they can be. For instance, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed urgently to God the Father. Luke chapter 22, verse 39 through 44. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I want you to notice that when Jesus prayed, an angel came from heaven to strengthen him. He then prayed more earnestly to the point that his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Prayers can be prayed earnestly and in desperation, like Daniel prayed for understanding of Jeremiah's prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. But supplication is always urgent. It's always desperate. It's begging and pleading at the feet of Jesus. Why? Why would we need to beg and plead at the feet of Jesus? Because we're not asking or petitioning God for something already promised to us. We're pleading and begging for God to change his mind. Before we move forward, let's first establish that we can change the mind of God. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken? and will he not fulfill it? Balaam, the prophet of God, explained to Balak, the king of Moab, that he couldn't curse God's people because God had blessed them. So God couldn't go back on his word and therefore make himself a liar. Let's explain what Balaam was saying about God. He didn't say that God's mind couldn't be changed, but he said that he, God himself, wouldn't change his own mind. If God were to change his own mind, then he would be unstable. He wouldn't be that firm foundation on which we stand, Psalms 62 verse 2 and Psalms 94 verse 22. But we, the people of God, can change the mind of God. Exodus chapter 32 verse 9 to 14. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, this is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them in order that I make a great nation of you. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them? from the face of the earth. Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, 
I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. This word here translated as relented is the Hebrew word on the screen, which is the same word translated as change his mind in Numbers 23 verse 19 that we just read a few minutes ago. We can negatively impact the mind of God as well, as seen in Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 through 8 when the Lord brought the flood. It says, And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That word regretted is the same word translated as change his mind. But just as Moses changed the mind of God to mercy instead of wrath, so can we. Here's another example. King David, incited by the devil, broke the command of God by numbering the people. This census caused the wrath of God to come upon the nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 21 verses 13 through 17. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell. And God sent the angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But as he was about to destroy it, the Lord saw, and he relented from the calamity. And he said to the angel who was working destruction, It is enough, now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, and in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces, and David said to God, Was it not I who gave command to number the people? It is I who have sinned and done great evil, but these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand, O Lord my God, be against me and against my father's house, but do not let the plague be on your people. God didn't just change his mind. He didn't just relent. God saw David and the elders pleading in sackcloth for mercy for the people of Israel. David, he didn't blame anyone else. It's that he placed himself before the Lord and said, It's my fault. Punish me. Don't punish them. They're innocent. He pleaded and he begged and the Lord changed his mind. He relented. Supplication is pleading with the Lord in all earnestness and urgency in order to change his mind. It moves the hand of the Lord away from judgment and towards mercy. This is why Jesus prayed instead of supplicated in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus wasn't trying to change the mind of God. He was praying if it be possible, if there be another way. But if not, let your will be done, Father. If Jesus hadn't prayed, but instead pleaded to change the mind of God, with supplication, then the mind of God would have been changed, and we would all be lost. This is what Jesus was trying to explain to Peter when he was being arrested after his prayers. Matthew chapter 26, verse 50 through 54. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will not at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? Jesus prayed for strength in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed for another way, if possible, but the will of the Father to be ultimately fulfilled. Jesus didn't supplicate, or the mind of the Father would have been changed, and we would all be lost forever. Now, some things cannot be changed. Pharaoh's dream 
was fixed by God and would soon begin, so no amount of supplication could change it. Genesis chapter 41 verse 32 Prophecies have been set and will happen as prophesied, but they can be postponed for a time, depending on the actions of the saints. In the book of Revelation, we see the seven churches in Asia. The last two churches have very different letters. The sixth church, Philadelphia, was promised something interesting. Look at this. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. This is a very different promise than the seventh church Laodicea was given. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 through 16. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Jesus promises that the church in Philadelphia would be kept from the hour of trial. But the church of Laodicea, they would be spit out of his mouth. They would be removed from his protection. Why? Because of their action. Because they were neither hot nor cold. Because they were lukewarm. In other words, they wanted to be friends of the world and followers of Jesus all at the same time. Look at what James says about this. James chapter 4 verse 4 through 8. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church and expect God to be happy with that. We have to either be all in for God or all in for the world. There's no fence for us to sit on because then God, he'll make the decision for us and he'll spit us out of his mouth. As we stated in our video, the seven churches and the rapture, which is under our the end times category, this last church, the church of Laodicea, will usher in the great tribulation that was prophesied from the time of the prophets of old, such as Joel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, etc. upon themselves because of their actions and the lack thereof. This is why James encourages us with, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James chapter 5 verse 16, King James Version. He starts by saying to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed. James isn't saying go to confession. No, no, no. James is referring to confidants, that tight inner circle of trusted friends that hold you up when necessary and that you hold up when necessary. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 and Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. Jesus himself had an inner circle of trusted friends within his 12 disciples. They were Peter, James, and John. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 and Matthew chapter 26 verse 37. Now after this, James explains that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. The word here translated as prayer the effectual fervent prayer is actually the Greek word for supplication that we read earlier in Ephesians when Paul was given us the armor of God. That is why it avails much because it can even change the mind of God. While you guys think about these things, let's sum everything up for you guys. Prayer is petitioning God for promises to be fulfilled, such as forgiveness of sins, Matthew 6, 12, healing, 1 Peter 2, 24, peace, John 14, 27, daily bread, Matthew 6, 11, basic needs, Matthew 6, 25 through 34, wisdom and understanding, James 1, 5, strengthening, Isaiah 40, verse 29 through 31, all things that God has promised, petition him, ask for them, bring them before him, Remind him of these things. 
Remind him of these promises. Sometimes there's a spiritual blockage like Daniel and you need to pray urgently and earnestly for a period of time in order to get through that spiritual blockage. For more on spiritual blockage, check out our video, Territorial Spirits, part two, getting prayers answered, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. Prayer is simply petitioning God for what he has already promised to give us. But supplication, that's changing the mind of God, mostly from wrath or punishment to mercy and grace. It's begging and pleading with God so that he might relent from his anger, so that he might dig us out of the hole that we dug ourselves into. It's to postpone his wrath for at least a short time. It's to make a way when there's no way. It's to do the impossible. This can only be done by the saints of God. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.